These are stars, giant balls of hot gas. If you zoom far enough, you'll see our galaxy. And it looks absolutely stunning. I've known you could replicate that beauty on your computer through math for a long time, but I always considered myself too dumb to code it. Well, a few years later, nothing changed, I'm still dumb, but I wanna code it, so... I set up a window using GLFW and OpenShield in C++, which basically gives us a canvas to render on. Then I built a camera system that tracks your position in 3D space with XYZ coordinates. I hooked up mouse movements so you can look around, scroll wheel to zoom in and out, and WSD to fly around. I created the star struct to hold each star's position, color and brightness. I spawned 1 million stars distributed throughout a spherical volume with a 100 unit radius. To make stars distribute evenly in a sphere, I used spherical coordinates with random theta and phi angles, and took the cube root of a random value for the radius. This gives us uniform density throughout the volume, instead of theta being cluttered together in the center. Stars can be classified based on temperature, as O-type stars, which are hot blue, P-type, which are blue-pink, A-type as white, F-type as yellow-white, M-type, which are cool red, G-type as yellow, and K-type, like our sun, which are orange. Each star type has a probability distribution somewhat matching real stellar populations, so you mostly see yellow, orange and red stars with fewer blue giants. I also added random brightness variation between 0.3 and 1 to create visual depth. Afterwards I swapped the spherical distribution in favor of a spiral galaxy, galaxy structure, structure with two main components. First the central bulge, containing 50% of stars distributed spherically within an 150 unit radius. These represent older stellar populations at the galactic center. Second the flattened disk with the remaining 85% of stars. For the disk, stars are distributed with higher density towards the center, and the vertical thickness follows a Gaussian distribution that gets thinner towards the edges. This creates the flat disk shape you see in actual spiral galaxies. The spiral arms use logarithmic spirals, following the equation r equals a times e to the power of p times theta. For each star in the disk, I calculate its distance to the nearest spiral arm by solving the spiral equation in reverse. Since the Milky Way has two major arms, I check both arm positions spaced 180 degrees apart. Then I use exponential falloff to create the density weight. Stars that are very close to the spiral arms have a 10% higher probability of being placed, while stars in between the arms get rejected more often. To fix the unrealistic, perfect circular edge, I extended the maximum radius by two times and created the three zone density system. The core disk from 0 to 85% radius stays at full density, then there's a transition zone from 85 to 100% radius that gradually fades from 100% to 50% density. This all ends with an outlier region from 100 to 200% radius with exponential decay down to just 8% acceptance probability. For animation, each star's angle increases by its angular velocity times delta time each frame. Then X and Z coordinates get recomputed from the radius and new angle, while Y stays the same. This makes stars rotate around the center with outer stars rotating slower. The reason I'm not simulating actual gravitational physics is because I tried the Ren body physics simulation, and yes, it looked cool and probably more realistic than my current one, but it could not handle more than 10,000 stars simultaneously. So we're just gonna focus on making our current one the rock. You know what's crazy about space? It's infinite, full of possibilities. And you can explore it all, no degree required, just curiosity and the right tools. The same thing should apply to careers nowadays, but the reality is that a lot of people feel stuck in jobs that don't excite them anymore, or worried about staying relevant as tech changes everything. Today's sponsor, Triple Ten, is an online bootcamp where you can learn actual in demand jobs like software development and data analytics completely remote, with no tech background needed. 82% of their grads get hired within 6 months, and they even have an 100% money back guarantee if it takes more than 10 months after they finish. Plus, Triple Ten is the only bootcamp in the US that gives you unlimited externship opportunities even after you graduate, so you keep getting real world experience to land better jobs, which is why their employment rate is so high. You can learn while working your current job and work on projects with real companies so you're building actual products and not just following tutorials. Their grads earn a median salary of $70,000, flexible installment with 0% interest rate, and a test drive with a free 2 week trial. This is your moment, don't waste it. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen for a free career consultation. Now that we have a galaxy, let's add the solar system. The solar system positions itself randomly between 200 and 600 units from the galactic center with the sun at the core and 8 planets orbiting around it. Planets continuously update their positions using Kepler's laws, with orbital speeds inversely proportional to the square root of their orbit radius. The rendering is using a zoom-based system that smoothly transitions between galaxy scale and solar system scale views. At low zoom levels below 0.1, the system appears as a tiny point. At medium zoom between 0.1 and 100, it gradually scales up. At high zoom above 100, orbital paths become visible as gray circles. The sun glows yellow when planets are colored according to their real characteristics, Earth is blue, Mars is reddish, and so on. 
The galaxy look pretty impressive at this point, but it's not quite like real galaxies. That's because we are missing gas clouds. Each gas cloud represents a distinct phase of the interstellar medium, which is the matter and radiation that exists in space between the star systems in a galaxy. They're characterized into six types, based on temperature. Molecular clouds at 10 to 50 Kelvin, which are 10 star-forming regions that absorb light. Cold neutral medium clouds at 50 to 100 Kelvin. Warm neutral medium at 6000 to 10,000 Kelvin. Warm ionized mediums at 8000 Kelvin. Hot ionized mediums at 10 to the power of 6 Kelvin. And coronal gas at 10 to the power of 6 in the extended galactic hollow. Each cloud has physical parameters including mass, position, orbital dynamics with radius, angle, angular velocity, a smoothing length that determines how far the cloud visual influence spreads, density, color, and turbulence properties. Clouds also have elongation factors between 1.5 to 4 times stretch. As you could probably guess, rendering 1 million stars, a solar system, and almost 29,000 gas clouds impacts performance. I implemented cooling which skips 50 to 75% of clouds at high zoom levels and a bunch of other optimizations that were suggested in the Visual Studio debugger. Shout out C. Gas clouds also have orbital motion, which approximates capillary rotation, meaning clouds closer to the galactic center orbit faster than those further out. I also added animated turbulence. Each cloud has its own phase offset and turbulence speed, so they wobble and shift slightly as they orbit, making them look organic and alive rather than stagnant. Their distribution, just like stars, follows somewhat realistic patterns. Molecular clouds trace the spiral arms using the same logarithmic spiral equations as the stars, so they concentrate where star formation usually happens. The neutral medium spreads across the disk, creating a relatively flat layer. Hot ionized gas has a much thicker vertical distribution, puffing up above and below the disk. And coronal gas populates a spherical halo. Black holes. An astronomical body so compact that its gravity prevents anything from escaping, even light. Daunting to even fathom or gaze upon. Our black hole sits at coordinate 000, the exact center of the galaxy, with a mass of 4.3 million solar masses, which is the actual mass of Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of all Milky Way. From this mass I calculate the Schwarzschild radius, which defines the event horizon, where gravity becomes so intense that not even light can escape. The code converts this to simulation units and applies a 3 times visual scaling factor so you can actually see it. The accretion disk, a glowing ring of superheated matter spiraling into the black hole, has an inner radius of 3 times the event horizon, which approximates the innermost stable circular orbit. This is the closest matter can orbit without falling in. The outer radius extends to 20 times the event horizon, defining the visible extent of the disk. The color of the disk simulates black body radiation based on temperature. The inner regions glow blue-white at over 100,000 Kelvin, the fastest orbiting material closest to the black hole. The middle sections are white-hot at around 10,000 Kelvin, and the outer regions fade to red-orange at about 3,000 Kelvin, where the material is cooler and orbiting slower. Supermassive black holes can also eject relativistic jets, collimated streams of plasma shooting out perpendicular to the disk at near light speeds. Our jets extend two times the disk radius vertically and are rendered as four layered cones. They have high transparency at the edges and are solid at the core. The photon sphere exists at 1.5 times the Schwarzschild radius, which is where photons can actually orbit the black hole. It's rendered as eight rings with golden color and decreasing opacity. The addition of the supermassive black hole was actually inspired by Quasars, especially this image from NASA. I couldn't find any existing C++ implementations, so I just decided to implement a supermassive black hole. And finally, I added on-screen options for changing the simulation parameters like star count, gas, or copy the seed and share it with friends, which will give them the same simulation as yours. Otherwise, every new run will be different. Not substantially, since I originally planned on implementing more objects you can find in the galaxy, but it will influence the solar system and star field position. Anyway, that was it for this project. Untitled Galaxy Simulator is available for download on GitHub of, uh, along the source This is not meant to be a realistic galaxy simulator. Optimizations were not a priority. I rock a very powerful CPU. PU and GPU and way, 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 way. yeah, basically, uh, it's probably gonna lag for you. It ran like shit in debug mode, but then uh, very smooth in release mode, so I have no idea what that tells me. But uh, decrease the amount of stars or gas if it's running bad. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one. My homosexual friend, Bob. <laughs>